Hello and welcome to today's webinar on treating harmonics in marine and offshore applications. Thank you for joining us. My name is Gennaro Casal and I'm the marketing manager here at Miris International. I'd like to introduce today's presenter, Tony Huvenars. He is the president and CEO of Miris International, a registered professional engineer and a member of IEEE. Tony joined Maris in 1996, having previously held the position as Chief Facilities Electrical Engineer at IBM. He has over 30 years experience dealing with the issues caused by harmonics and has gained valuable insight in the resolution of power quality related problems. Tony has published and presented numerous technical papers on power quality and harmonics and we are very happy to have him as speaker today. In order to get the greatest value from this 45 minute presentation, we strongly encourage you to take notes and ask questions. We invite you to ask your questions at any time throughout the presentation. However, due to the number of people online today, your sound has been muted. Instead, you may input your questions at any time into the question text box within the control panel located at the top right of your screen. We will answer your questions at the end of the presentation. I would like to let you all know that we are recording as we speak today. The great advantage of this for you is that you will be able to review the webinar later as there is a lot of information that will be presented today. And that's one of the great values of registering and participating in Maris webinars is that you will receive a copy of the recordings we will send you a link after the meeting within a week or so so that you can watch the webinar again at your own convenience and at your own pace. And now I would like to present our speaker, Tony Huvenars. Thanks very much, Gennaro. Good day, everyone, and thank you all very much for joining us today for this webinar on treating harmonics in marine and offshore applications. Harmonics have become a major concern for all stakeholders in this industry, including ship designers, ship builders, shipyards, operators, the marine classification society, and of course the ship owners themselves. Since our beginnings in 1991, Maris International has been a supplier of unique products to reduce or eliminate harmonic problems and save energy and electrical power distribution systems worldwide. Much of this has been utilized in marine applications, particularly more recently with the expanded use of variable speed drives for electric propulsion. We have a lot to cover today, so I think I'll get right down to it. We will begin our discussions with the many types of applications and concerns that the marine industry is experiencing with respect to harmonics. We'll cover the more relevant harmonic limits of a few classification societies. But it's important to note that all certifying bodies have established limits because of safety concerns and the severity of the problem. We'll share eight projects where harmonics were successfully treated. Then we'll do a bit of an overview on VFDs and how they create voltage distortion. Um, and then provide various options for treatment, including a wide spectrum passive harmonic filter that was specifically designed for the marine market. And finally, we'll introduce a very easy to use and free software tool for doing harmonic analysis through computer simulations. As mentioned earlier, harmonics and their related issues cause equipment problems and contribute to unexplained downtime in critical environments, harmonic disturbances, damage, expensive equipment, cause failure, and add expense in the form of maintenance, and replacement, and increase energy consumption. Therefore, a solution is needed to avoid disruptions and the high costs associated, including safety. A proactive approach to power quality helps solve harmonic issues before they occur and prevents future problems. Many challenges are faced in the shipbuilding industry. 
Power systems are weak, generator-based, which causes high levels of voltage distortion. There are large numbers of nonlinear loads with the introduction of equipment such as electric propulsion systems, various pumps, thrusters, etc. Equipment lifespan can be impacted by high levels of voltage distortion. And complying with rules being enforced by the marine governing bodies, including harmonic limits and maintenance and alarm requirements, is a necessity. And of course, there are solace safety concerns that need to be taken into consideration as well. This clause uh, came from the technical specification of the European thruster manufacturer. In their instructions, they state that although they supply a passive harmonic filter, in extreme cases, additional filters or increased generator power can be necessary. This is evidence that harmonic mitigation is needed, and if the right passive filter isn't selected, problems may persist, including the addition of extra filters or increased generator power. And I can assure you, and you'll find out in the presentation today, that there are good filters available that can meet uh, these needs without these conditions. The offshore oil and gas market, there are another unique set of challenges and safety concerns. Again, the power systems are typically very weak, generator-based, which creates high voltage distortion levels. There are also large numbers of nonlinear loads uh, and variable speed drive operations for the drilling package and pumping equipment, including devices such as top drives, draw works, um, rotary tables, mud pumps, etc. So uh, a lot of loads and by far the majority of the loads on uh, an offshore drill rig or production platform are nonlinear harmonic generated. In these applications, any equipment downtime is extremely costly. The cost of uh, leasing a, a drill rig can be in uh, several hundreds of thousands of dollars a day. In addition, we're dealing with a dangerous environment with combustible materials in an isolated location and harsh weather conditions. We need to comply with the certifying body, the marine certifying body uh, standards again in these applications. Um, and I would like to say that Maris has had a lot of experience um, on offshore um, rigs and production platforms, a very successful application of our filters. So as mentioned earlier, all marine certifying bodies have mandatory harmonic limits. Here we're showing uh, some notes from three of, the, three of the more important ones, ABS, ENVGL, and Lloyd's Register. So there's many more, and they all have similar type. All basically limit the, the voltage distortion to 8%, uh, with harmonics up to the 50th. ABS, it's important to note, applies harmonics up to the 100th when active front end drives are being used, and this is because of the higher frequency harmonics that these AFI drives generate. I'll expand on that uh, later on in the presentation today. And there are no specific limits for current distortion. Current distortion is indirectly limited, however, because the harmonic currents must be reduced in order to meet the voltage distortion limits. And I'll start into uh, some of our case studies, uh, examples of where harmonic mitigation was applied um, on very, in very, various marine and, and offshore applications. This first one is a vessel that was equipped with DC propulsion drives, and it was purchased uh, to be modified, retrofitted, and upgraded uh, for use as a supply and uh, service vessel for the offshore oil and gas industry. However, due to multiple failures caused by high harmonic voltage distortion, it could not pass sea trials. Problems included loss of navigation, operational issues, such as component failures in crane controls and remote operated vehicles, which occurred particularly during, during dynamic positioning operation, uh, where the 
when the voltage distortion reached levels above 24 percent, which is extremely high and of course um, equipment is likely to have problems at those levels. The existing harmonic mitigation scheme of phase shifting transformers operating in parallel with impedance matched inductors failed to reduce the voltage distortion to acceptable levels. This could have been predicted as phase shifting or pseudo multipulse strategies are not a viable solution for thyristor based or SCR based DC drive applications. The notching that's introduced in particular is not cancelled by the phase shift, it just gets shifts, shifted and actually distorts uh, the currents and voltages even, even further. So series connected passive harmonic filters were applied to each of four 3000 horsepower propulsion DC drives and one 1500 horsepower DC drive retractable thruster. The system voltage distortion was lowered to less than 8% under all operating conditions, resulting in an ABS compliant harmonic profile. The filters also substantially reduced the voltage commutation notching introduced by thyristor operation of the DC drives, which was believed to be a major contributor to the equipment failures. In addition, the built-in monitoring system offers early stage warnings complete with redundant safety controls and alerts. In compliance with the new ABS standards, the harmonic filter will disconnect the capacitor bank while maintaining operation should any problem occur with the capacitors. This next application is an example of a cable laying vessel. Uh, it was equipped with, again, remote operated vehicles, or ROV, that's used to uh, walk the ocean floor, dig the trench, and lay in the cable. The ROV was equipped with various electric pumps and thrusters uh, to control, that were controlled by VFDs. These non-ear loads increased the voltage distortion to levels above the mandatory limit of D and V, requiring the customer to isolate the loads by renting additional costly generators. And the generators that were added are shown here, uh, these two white boxes, um, one for the port side, one for the starboard side ROVs. And uh, you can see that they occupy, occupy quite a significant amount of space and there was certainly a significant cost associated with that. After confirming the recommended solution through computer simulation, series connected filters were installed to supply the ROV VFD load. Current and voltage distortion was reduced to well below the mandatory limit, even when supplied from the main generator. The customer was able to remove the additional generators, freeing up deck space and improving the equipment lifespan and saving energy. So with the filters installed, current distortion was reduced to 6.4, just a little over 6%, and running off the main generator, voltage distortion was reduced to less than 3%, well within the requirements of DMV. This project involved a total of eight IMR vessels, or inspection, maintenance, and repair vessels uh, used in the oil and gas industry. These vessels were built in Brazil. They originally were designed around active front end or AFI drives for the propulsion systems, but the manufacturer was never able to get them to work due to the high frequency noise they introduced. Eventually they were stripped out and replaced by another manufacturer's propulsion system utilizing 6 pulse VFD and the Maris, Maris passive filter. The Atwood Aurora rig uh, is a jack-up rig shown here. It was equipped with both AC and DC drives on the drilling package. In order to meet the harmonic requirements of ABS, a total of five series connected passive filters were designed in from the outset to provide harmonic mitigation with full redundancy. It was first put into operation off the coast of Alexandria in Egypt in uh, 2008. 
This Statoil Peregrinocyte is a combined drill rig and production platform. Passive harmonic filters supplied with the drilling package work so well that they were kept connected during production operations, even when not drilling. This was because it made the underperforming phase shifting transformer harmonic mitigation package provided with the production equipment operate within specifications. So not only did the harmonic filters meet the requirements of um, the certifying body while in drilling operation, it also provided harmonic mitigation for the production equipment. Bulk, bulk cargo handling ships with self-unloading systems required uh, additional passive harmonic filters after originally failing ABS testing due to high levels of voltage distortion. This was not an electric propulsion vessel. This was uh, the VFDs were on the ballast pumps and the cargo conveyor system. So you can see there were two 400 horsepower ballast pumps and four 400 horsepower cargo unloading um, drives for the uh, conveyor system. So quite large drive systems and harmonic mitigation was applied to, to that equipment to meet the ABS limits. In this example, 350 horsepower passive filters have been used to control harmonics on starting motors of the jet turbine propulsion systems on aircraft carriers. So these are obviously very large propulsion systems. Uh, the starting motors are small component of the, uh, the entire propulsion system, but our filters are a critical part of the harmonic mitigation for those. And finally, this application was a pipe laying vessel, and this was uh, equipped with passive harmonic filters on the large VFDs of the mooring winches. It has been in service since 2007 without incident and just recently brought into the shipyard in Singapore um, for, uh, for service and maintenance. In the interest of time, I will assume that uh, most of you, if not all, are familiar with how VFDs introduce harmonic currents on our power systems. I will, however, take a few minutes to describe how these harmonic currents will create voltage distortion, especially on systems with high impedance, as is the case in marine applications where generators are the power source. So on this slide, we're showing a very simple one-line diagram. Generators as our source, which has a certain source impedance. We could have transformers in the circuit or cables in the circuit with their impedance. And then our nonlinear load, which is a variable speed drive. In this case, we're showing an AC variable speed drive. The equivalent diagram shown to the right here has the nonlinear loads as a current source of harmonics injecting harmonics into the power system as these harmonics pass through the impedance of the cables, the transformers, and the source impedance of the generators. And as they do so, Ohm's law says you're going to get voltage drops um, due to the, the harmonic currents and the impedance of the power system. So you'll get these voltage drops at each of the harmonic numbers. And since the at the loads, the impedance that these harmonic currents will see is highest in that we have the cable impedance, the transformer impedance, and the source impedance, you will get the largest voltage drop at the loads. And the accumulative effect of all the voltage drops is what creates our voltage distortion. As you move upstream in the system, the voltage drops will be less at each harmonic. The voltage distortion will be less. The least amount of voltage distortion will be measured at the source or the generators in the marine applications. And voltage distortion is the root sum square of all of the individual harmonic voltages um, in divided by the fundamental component. So it's a, it's a measure of these voltage drops that are introduced as harmonic currents pass through the impedance of our power system. 
And although current distortion decreases on higher impedance weak systems such as generators, it does so at the expense of voltage distortion. So here we're showing um, the application of a variable speed drive on a stiff system, low impedance utility source. So here the drive is not equipped with an AC line reactor or DC link choke, and it draws current at 100% distortion. You see very sharp pulses which contain a lot of harmonic content. But if we look at the voltage distortion on this utility feed, the voltage distortion is only 2.2%. So even though there's a lot of current distortion, there's very little voltage distortion. This exact same drive, though, when supplied by a weak generator source, draws less current harmonics because the impedance of the source or the generator limits the amount of harmonic currents that are introduced. But as these currents pass through the impedance of the source, the high impedance of the generator creates voltage distortion. So here we have 13, almost 14 percent voltage distortion, very sharp flat topping of the voltage, very high distortions. So we're, we're talking about the same drive system here and the difference between its operation on a weak source or a generator source. And since marine applications are all supplied by generators, we're dealing with these very high levels of voltage distortion. So this slide shows a list of some of the typical solutions used in treating harmonics generated by VFDs. And I'll spend a little bit, a little bit of time discussing each one. Reactors, both AC or DC, are very commonly used as a form of harmonic mitigation. They can typically reduce current harmonics by about 50%. This may seem like quite a bit, but it is rarely sufficient, sufficient enough to meet marine harmonic limits. And increasing the reactor impedance to reduce current distortion, distortion further is, is not possible because it will introduce voltage drops that will cause VFD misoperation. Multipulse VFDs, 12, 18, 24 pulse or so, uh, or transformer phase shifting uh, strategies are also very commonly used and can provide reasonably effective performance in reduction of current harmonics in VFD applications. There are conditions, however, um, with respect to the performance that being uh, whether the power system is reasonably balanced, the voltages are reasonably balanced, and if there's existing background voltage distortion. Voltage imbalance may or may not be uh, a major issue in marine applications, but background voltage distortion certainly is, um, and that can uh, affect the performance of the, uh, of the multi-pulse drive systems. Also, as mentioned earlier, multi-pulse phase shifting strategies are not effective at all on fire ester bridges or SCRs, so if you have DC drives, um, it is not a, a good strategy to use. These two graphs show the performance of an 18-pulse drive system under various voltage balancing conditions and with background voltage distortion. So this first one on the left shows um, a balanced voltage and this shows the performance in current distortion of the drive from light loads, no loads operation up to full load operation. So with balanced voltages this particular uh, multi-pulse system performed quite well with current distortion around 5%, a little more than 5% at full load, and held that performance reasonably well until we got into light loads. But with just 1% voltage imbalance, you can see the drop off in performance, still somewhat acceptable. But when we got to 2% vo uh, voltage imbalance, the performance dropped off the map and it actually was no better than you would get with um, a simple line reactor probably worse than what you would get with a simple line reactor. And the reason is that the cancellation is dependent on the phase currents being similar. And as soon as we get in voltage imbalance, they're no longer similar, you will get the cancellation that's expected. 
In this graph on the right, we've got back, background voltage distortion. We start with zero voltage distortion, which basically doesn't exist on our power system, so this was slightly more than 0% here when we were doing the test. But then we went up from 1% all the way up to 5%, and we did this by adding variable speed drives in our test facility to create the voltage distortion. So this lower graph here is operation under full load, 100% load, so you can see again, quite good performance with very little background voltage distortion, but as we got up and approached even the 5% level, now we were well above 10%. And at 50% loading, the performance drop-off is even more, even more dramatic. So both of these conditions are very common on, on, in marine applications and therefore often make uh, multi-pulse or phase shifting strategies ineffective. We are starting to see more commonly the use of parallel active filters. Uh, these uh, measure the current being drawn by the nonlinear load and supply the harmonic currents that are required by the load. So they will inject harmonic currents into the system that the load can draw so that the upstream current that the power system sees becomes much more sinusoidal. Um, these can be reasonably um, effective, but they uh, can be quite, a, quite expensive. And one major issue is related to the fact that they'll introduce some higher frequency harmonics based on the IGBT switching frequencies here, the IGBTs that are used to create the harmonics to inject back into the power system. They would be susceptible to background voltage distortion, and they're quite complex devices, so require startup and, uh, and regular maintenance. I'd like to give you an example of how the, uh, the high frequency harmonics introduced by an active harmonic filter can cause problems in a power system. This was a site where I went to take some measurements. The customer was having problems with some test equipment. Uh, there was a 48 volt DC power supply on one of their testers that was that was failing uh, as soon as they energized. I went and took some measurements. It could see that um, there was very little overall voltage distortion at this site. It was less than 1%, but I could see a very high frequency ripple on the voltage waveforms. As I went in and looked at the spectrum, you could see that there was uh, harmonics up around the you know, 39th to 41st, 43rd harmonic. This was being drawn into the tester um, by that power supply. And you can see this high frequency um, currents at, at no loads. So there was a resonance uh, between this uh, power supply on the um, tester and the high frequency ripple introduced by the IGBTs of the active harmonic filter. We went back to the uh, supplier of the active filter. They tried to change the um, filters. So all of these devices require passive filters in order to address the harmonics that they're creating. But it didn't help. It helped very little. And ultimately, the only solution was to permanently turn off the active harmonic filter. So they end up with, um, pardon upon a very very expensive um, anchor. We're also seeing a lot of applications of active front end drives. An active front end, an AFI system, takes the normal diode bridge rectifier on the input of the drive and uses an IGBT uh, inverter bridge instead. And this can be switched with very high uh, switching frequencies and in such a manner that it draws current that is more sinusoidal, particularly if we are looking at harmonics up to the 50. But all of these devices require a passive filter in order to deal with the harmonics that they're generating, so these would be equipped with LCL filters as, sh as shown here. But again, so a passive filter not unlike the passive filter that would be used on a six pulse drive system. Um, they're typically smaller and tuned to higher frequencies, but it's the same type of device. So 
The AFIs are quite expensive. They also introduce high frequency harmonics in a similar manner that the active um, parallel active filters do. Um, they can create EMI radiation. They introduce higher losses and again are quite complex um, requiring startup and, and regular service. So let's take take a few minutes and we'll, and we'll discuss a little bit about the high frequency noise and that effect that the AFI drives introduce. So these graphs shown here are an application on a, on a marine vessel where the drives that were being used were configured such that they could be operated as a standard six pulse drive but also operated as an active front end drive. And this allowed the uh, authors of the paper where this information came from, the authors in the paper to run in the two modes and take measurements. So what we start with here is we've got the operating as a, as a standard six pulse drive, the phase to ground voltage waveform, we can see some high frequency noise on that voltage waveform, but when we operate as, a, as an active front end drive, it's much more severe. The, the levels of high frequency noise. If we look at the spectrum of this waveform, we can see there are harmonic components at the higher frequencies, much higher levels when operating as an active front end drive. Input current distortion, typical of a six pulse, you're going to see the double um, pulsed current wave shapes that has predominantly fifth and seventh harmonics as the harmonics that it generates. The AFI looks a bit, bit, bit more sinusoidal but with a high frequency uh, ripple. Uh, lower levels of the low frequency harmonics but we can see a band peaking out here of the high frequency levels. It also introduces um, ground leakage currents as a result of neutral to ground voltages or common mode voltages. So here's um, again operating as a standard six pulse drive, very little neutral to ground voltage introduced by the drive, very high levels uh, introduced when it's operating as an active front end drive. The neutral to ground current you can see as a standard six pulse drive, much much higher levels of ground currents which circulate through the, the electrical system and can cause all kinds of different problems with sensitive sensitive connected equipment. And the last graph I'd like to show you is the importance of addressing the fact that active solutions such as active front end drives or active harmonic filters do introduce harmonics at, at higher frequencies. So our first graph here shows us the Spectrum, these are voltage measurements taken on a, on a, sh on a ship. Um, we can see our frequency here on the, on the x-axis going from 0 up to 2.5 kilohertz or on a 50 hertz system, the 50th harmonic. And we can see the band here predominantly 5th and 7th, uh, some uh, higher levels, but all are very very low if we look at percent THD in current here, very low levels. Total harmonic distortion was only 1.68 percent, so well within any of the requirements of marine certifying bodies, IEEE 519, or any of the IEC standards as well. However, when measurements were taken above the 50th harmonic in the band from 2.5 kilohertz to 10 kilohertz, we see a band of, you know, a large, high level of harmonics introduced which reflect the switching frequencies of the IGBTs. In this case it was around 3.3, 3.4 kilohertz. There was enough distortion here, you can see the highest is at 5% THD, the total harmonic distortion in this band was 8.14%. Above the requirements of the marine certifying bodies, granted just slightly above, 
But these are high frequency harmonics. These are going to cause a lot more problems on the power system than the lower frequency harmonics, you know, up to the 50, 50, uh, 50 hertz or 50th harmonic. So they need to be controlled much better than the lower frequency harmonics. And they will cause problems with, with connected equipment. If we go on in the 10 kilohertz band, again, there, there are standards, IEC standards in this band that require filtration being done and that, and so the levels are, again, are lower. But in the range from 50th harmonic to 10 kilohertz, there are no requirements, no standards, IEC or IEEE standards, or marine standards that are going to limit that, except for ABS that, re that requires this to be considered when active um, devices are used. So total, more than 8.3%, but the manufacturer is going to highlight and point to this 1.68% because that's 0 to 50, 50th. So now let's talk a little bit about a passive solution, a wide spectrum harmonic filter. Uh, this is our lineator, Miris's lineator filter. It's an input filter, treats harmonics generated by the variable speed drives. It's a simple passive device outperforms multi-pulse drive systems, active front-end drives, and active harmonic filters. When you consider all of the conditions for multi-pulse systems, we've got a voltage imbalance, current imbalance problem for active front-end and active harmonic filters, we've got the high-frequency noise problems. When those are all factored in, the lineator outperforms them. Um, it uh, meets, you know, we have a real-world guarantee if there's background voltage distortion and voltage imbalance will still meet our performance limits. A restored power factor to near unity. We're compatible with generators by ensuring that the capacitive reactance of our filters is quite low and within the uh, reactive power capability curves of the generators. Very high efficiency, talk to that a little bit, so you're saving on energy and emissions associated with the operations of the generators. And we can do large sizes. Uh, at this point, um, 2.6 kilohertz, kilowatts is the largest, but we, we definitely have designs for larger systems and well over 10,000 um, filters in service to date. Here's the um, schematic diagram. On the input side, we have a high impedance blocking reactor. On the output side, we have a compensating reactor, which allows us to get more effect in reducing harmonics without introducing too much of a voltage drop. The branch circuit is a tuned circuit, um, and it's set up so that the capacitive reactance is extremely low, so we're compatible with generators. We're tuned below the fifth harmonic on the input side so that we don't attract harmonics from um, other loads connected on the system or background voltage distortion. The output, it's tuned in around the seventh and is targeted to reduce the harmonic currents introduced by the six pulse variable speed drive. These measurements um, show um, the operation of a 350 horsepower variable speed drive equipped with a line reactor. Current distortion was 36 percent, predominantly fifth and seventh harmonics. Voltage distortion was 4.4%, um, again, 5th, 7th, 11th, and 13th with the predominant harmonics. Same drive when we apply our filter to it, and this is our high performance, uh, less than 5% uh, current model. You can see the current distortion down well below 5%, voltage, that dropped the voltage distortion. And this shows that, you know, all the harmonics are treated at all load profiles. So. Fifth harmonic at full load dropped from 110 to, to 5 amps. Seventh from 37 down to 4.9. You can see, you know, as we go down in lighter loads, similar levels of reduction on all the harmonics. Current distortion dropped significantly. Total demand distortion, which is an IEEE 519 um, definition for um, levels of... Uh, harmonic mitigation required, and as we go into lighter lows, we can see we're well below the 5% on TDD. We reduce K-factor, which is a measure of the heat content in um, 
the harmonics and the, the nonlinear loads, and we improve power factor. You can see the resultant power factor, uh, even at light loads, very, very high power factor levels. And this graph shows another application of the filter on a six pulse variable speed drive. But this one we used um, a meter that measures all the way up to the 500th harmonic. So this is our harmonic number here. This is your current distortion at each harmonic number. So under, you know, up to the 50th harmonic here, you can see that's where our harmonics exist, um, but they're all below the 3%. Um, at the higher level harmonics, all the way up to the 500th, there's, there's no high frequency harmonic components. So there are no, no issues re related to these high frequency component, uh, components on our power system. I talked about the, you know, the real-world guarantee. Here we have, with uh, again, with, volt with uh, voltage imbalance, the performance of, uh, of a filter um, with balanced or 1% imbalance. You can see here's our, our uh, performance waveform. Light loads, THD, all the way up to full load. Uh, as we introduce 2% imbalance, there is a drop-off but it still um, performs within our, our performance guarantee, even at those higher uh, voltage imbalance levels. And with background voltage distortion, you can see there is some drop-off in performance, even, uh, you know, with, but, but even with 5% background voltage distortion, we're still within our performance guarantee of less than 8% on the standard filter. Uh, the, we talked a little bit about um, efficiency and the difference between um, you know, the additional losses that you would get with multi-pulse drive systems as opposed to a passive a filter with a six-pulse drive. This is an application, it's not a marine application, but it's a clear application of the uh, energy savings that can be achieved by using the lineator filter. Here, our customer was trying to convert the um, owner of, of the, the uh, skydiving simulator um, to convert from their competitor's filter to, I'm sorry, their competitor's drive to their drive with, with our filter um, packaged with it. So they ran the system on using the 18 pulse competitor's drive and at full fan speed, 60 hertz, they were drawing 190 kilowatts. With the reduced speed, um, with 50, just, over, just under 56 hertz, um, the, the system was drawing 152 kilowatts. When they switched to their drive with a six pulse filter, um, at full speed, now the system was only drawing 183 kilowatts. And at the reduced fan speed of 818 RPM, they only needed to run the drives at 55 hertz. So the filter was improving the operation, allowed them to go at a, a lower speed, which reduced the kilowatt consumption even further. So at full load operation, there was a 3.5% reduction in real power. Um, at the lighter load operation, there was a 6%. So real energy savings associated with those two systems. There's also significant energy savings when we compare to an active front end drive. So this table shows two drives, uh, 75 horsepower, or 75 kilowatts and a 400 kilowatt um, from the same manufacturer. These are losses from their technical data sheet, the AF AFI drive, for the 75 kilowatt at 4.1 kilowatts of losses, the, the uh, six pulse drive, again from the same manufacturer, is only 1.9 kilowatts. If we add the losses of the filter, the, the harmonic filter to that, we're a total of 2.7 kilowatts, which is still substantially less than the losses. You can see there's you know, almost half the losses, a little more than half the losses that you have with an AFI system. Significant improvement in efficiency of the system uh, which is, with a difference of 1.7% in efficiency, which is really significant. As I said, it's 
it's almost, it's just over half the, the losses that you would get with an AFI system. Exactly the same relationship or relative performance when we looked at the 400 horse, or 400 kilowatt drive. So we go through, if we go through the energy savings analysis on that, we can look at a 400 kilowatt um, diesel electric thruster. Um, here, if we look at the operating time um, as 2,935 hours per year, which is about 33.5%, this came from a typical engine operating profile here to just give us something that we, could, we can use to analyze. We have the efficiency gain of 1.7%. Um, if we look at diesel generation, generator consumption as being 0.4 liters per kilowatt hour and a cost of diesel fuel of 8, 80, um, 80 cents um, per liter, then we can see that we go through the calculations. There's a savings of almost 20,000 kilowatt hours per year fuel savings being almost 8,000 liters per year and a cost savings of over 6,000 US dollars per year. This savings would provide a payback of less than two years on the filter alone, but of course the combined package of a filter and a six pulse drive compared to an AFI drive is less expensive. So there's a, there's a savings um, just in that installed cost as well. And, of course, if you're reducing your fuel consum consumption, you are um, improving the environment, lowering the, the emissions, um, and the greenhouse gas emissions, emissions and so on. So now to wrap up, I'll, I'll go through a little bit on our, uh, our Marine and offshore specific linear. This one is uh, designed specifically for marine applications. The MOS linear features an advanced condition based monitoring system that monitors the health of the harmonic filter at all times with local and remote alarms for monitoring the capacitor bank, the reactor temperature, and the harmonic distortion or the performance of the filter. There are corrosion resistance features added on all components in the enclosure is um, a, uh, uses marine grade paint and galvanil steels to reduce uh, the corrosion of the, of the enclosure. Capacitors are isolated from the reactor allowing for safe access. The monitoring system some is a, is a web-based uh, software system uh, there's a lot of information that can be presented uh, through a connection through the internet um, and or a local display. Uh, this particular one shows the voltage measurements. Uh, we can also do current spectrums, we measure all the way up to the 63rd harmonic. Uh, we have the waveforms, voltage current waveforms, and there are alarms that can be configured as part of the metering package, various alarms that we um, can set will, are shown here with voltage RMS max and current RMS max values, frequency variations, capacitance of the filter, so making sure that it's, it's still near our design capacitance, the voltage and current distortion, voltage imbalance, and so on. And we also monitor various uh, points within the filter on the reactor for temperature for temperature levels and can provide early, early condition-based monitoring um, of the filter itself. And just uh, to wrap up then, uh, we've developed a proprietary computer simulation software called Solve, but it is free and available for any engineer consultant, um, OEM to download, uh, to run um, their, their particular applications uh, to determine the current and voltage distortion levels. Um, it will compare these to IEEE 519 harmonic limits 
which then can be related to the marine standards, uh, depending on which, which certifying body you need to meet. Um, the software is available, as I said, at no charge. Um, there's a lot of information that can be generated as you run your simulations. It has the unique application of allowing the app voltage imbalance and background voltage distortion um, to be included in the analysis. There's no other software, uh, harmonic analysis software in the world, even if you're you know, spending tens of thousands of dollars on, on the software, no other software in the world allows this, uh, this particular feature. And it's very critical um, when you're looking at the various harmonic mitigation solutions and applications. Here's an example of a one line using the, uh, the Solve software. Here we have um, an IMR vessel. Um, from, our one, from the one line of the vessel, we've taken all the various um, variable speed drive loads. Here are the thrusters on the, a, the port A side and B side. Um, other thrusters as their equipment, also the, the um, starboard side. And so there's various uh, variable speed drives, various load or sizes of the drive systems. We've done this analysis with just a 3% AC line reactor, a little bit of linear load. We run the simulation, it produces the uh, voltage and current harmonics. There's a lot of other information that can be the waveform spectrums, reports, a lot of a lot of uh, information that can be generated from this uh, simulation. Uh, here you can see that the voltage distortion was over 15 percent with current distortion around 22 percent, so well above any of the marine harmonic standards. We run the same simulation but with um, a passive filter on the front end. This filter then reduces the current distortion you can see at each branch. Overall current distortion at just over 5% with voltage distortion just over 5% as well or well within the marine certifying standards. So that uh, completes the presentation today. Um, I hope you found it informative and now what we can do is take um, some questions to see if there are some questions uh, generated by uh, those in attendance. Thank you, Tony. We're now going to begin the ans to answer the questions that were submitted during today's presentation. And as a reminder, you can still submit questions through the question pane in your attendee control panel. For this question and answer session, I would like to hand over the microphone to Talia Mary, who is a sales and applications engineer at Miris International. She will be directing the questions and answers that we've received during this presentation. And now I would like to welcome Talia. All right, so we have a good question. I recently heard it said that when dealing with propulsion systems, that the system harmonics are a wait and see proposition and will be dealt with after the system is operational. I view this as a um, archa archaic um, approach. Is it possible to mitigate harmonics prior to initializing the system? Uh, absolutely. Uh, that practice um, is a very dangerous one and certainly could be a very, very expensive one. Um, one of the examples that I gave was uh, those eight IMR vessels or offshore service vessels um, that originally were designed with uh, active front end propulsion systems. Um, the supplier of the AFI drives could not get them to work. The only solution was ultimately to strip them out and replace them. Of course, that delayed the project significantly and definitely cost the uh, supplier of the active front end drives a lot of money. Um, there are certainly ways of doing computer analysis, computer simulation to and anticipate what levels of distortion you're going to get with your propulsion systems. Solve is an excellent tool for doing that. Uh, at this point, it doesn't have active front-end drive uh, models. Um, 
and someday we'll probably introduce those as well, but you can certainly look and do your analysis with a standard six pulse drive with line reactors or DC link troves and with uh, passive filters as possible harmonic mitigations. And definitely that's something that needs to be done beforehand, not after the fact. Okay, next question. I understand that capacitors or pa passive uh, filters can cause problems with generator operation. Therefore, would you recommend that the capacitor bank of the MOS lineator be disconnected while operating on a generator? It is true that um, generators um, can have problems if they're supplying um, high capacitive reactive loads. So if um, if you have a passive filter that that under light loads, and this is typical of many passive filters that are out there under light loads, and even even some of the active front end drives because they also require uh, passive filters on their front end, so they'll have LCL filters that have passive filters on the front end and active harmonic filters. So these passive devices have capacitors under lightly loaded conditions. These this can introduce um, very low power factors in high levels of capacitive reactants. All generator manufacturers have generator reactive power capability curves. And you need to ensure that your capacitive reactants will never exceed the minimum uh, or the maximum levels that they allow. Um, with the lineator, the MOS lineator, our designs are such that we will meet, we are less than what the generator manufacturer's reactive power capability curves would be. Um, so in normal operation, you wouldn't need to switch out the capacitors. But if you have a situation where you might have multiple generators that operate in parallel, and you can have situations where you'll be shutting off the majority of the generators and maybe running on one generator, and you keep all of the filtered loads connected on the system, then you could have a situation where the capacitive reactive power might, might exceed that of the generators. So if that's a possibility, then we would recommend that uh, contactors be included with the passive filter and the capability of switching them out under light loads. Another question? Um, can you please elaborate on how active front end drives introduce high frequency harmonics and why that is a problem? So I did, uh, I did touch on that uh, in the presentation. The main issue here is that the active devices, whether they be active front ends or an active harmonic filter, require IGBTs to operate and these IGBTs are fast switching switches. And as they switch at their switching frequency, they will introduce harmonics into, into the power system. These need to be filtered. They need to be filtered with a passive filter device. Um, just the same way the lower frequency harmonics that are introduced by six pulse drives need to be filtered. The problem that exists today is that there aren't any standards that require the active front end manufacturers or the active harmonic filter manufacturers to limit the harmonics generated in the frequency band from 50th harmonic or 2.5 or 3 kilohertz to 10 kilohertz. And that's where the majority of the IGBTs are switching. They're switching in that range. Now, some manufacturers will provide good filters. They're expensive. I mean, they're, they're relatively, they're bigger than the filters that they would normally like to provide, and they're much more expensive, so they often do not provide them. Those that do not, you'll see high, high levels of, of uh, high frequency harmonics. The few that do would do a better job, but you're definitely not assured that an active front end drive will limit the amount of high frequency noise that it introduces. And we need to understand that high frequency harmonics 
much more of a problem on our power system than the lower frequency harmonics. Voltage distortion, it's a lot easier to get voltage distortion when you're dealing with the higher frequencies on the power systems because the impedance of the power system is higher due to the, the, the frequency. And when you have these higher frequency distortion levels, the connected equipment is much more sensitive to the high frequency levels as well. So it's a real problem, often ignored, one that we all need to be aware of. Okay, um, another question is, I would like to link to the harmonic analysis software. Where can I download solve simulation software? Okay, the, the software is available on our website, on the home page of our website. I believe it's on the right hand side of our website. You can see it'll ask you um, to register. Um, we ask everybody that's using the software to register so that we have a record of who's using it so that when we do upgrade the software down the road we can uh, we can notify everybody that uh, that there's a new version available and there will be a new version introduced very shortly okay I think uh, I think that's oh yeah and, and the software is free anybody can download okay um, I have a I, I have a question uh, regarding the first question I asked. Uh, remember, it was about um, initializing the system, uh, mitigating the harmonics uh, prior to initializing the system. Um, so they're asking, the system I've been dealing with has caused reverse current protection in this main uh, switchboard to trip and caused the generator circuit breaker to trip. Is this caused by the voltage distortion? Um, maybe not. Um, it could be harmonics or it could be high frequency, maybe not necessarily harmonics. But sometimes when you have parallel, I don't know if there's parallel generators in this situation, but sometimes when you have parallel generators, you'll get circulating currents um, between the generators. These are typically at three times the frequency of the fundamental. I don't like to refer to it as a, as a harmonic because it, it's actually not a distorted uh, current that's present. It's actual hundred, you know, three times the frequency current that's circulating. That is likely what's causing your circuit breaker to trip. We can definitely take that offline if you want uh, some further discussions. Um, we do have devices that can limit circulating currents if that is, if that is your problem. It's a different device than I presented today, but, but we do have a solution available. I see there's another question up there about active filters uh, having higher losses. Um, what I was referring to wasn't an active filter when I was talking about the losses, I was talking about an active front end drive. Active filters do have you know, relatively high losses, but um, depending on the size of the filter would determine whether, you know, the, the, the amount of losses that are introduced in the power system. So there might be some applications where a parallel active filter um, in, introduces relatively low losses. But I, would, I still would expect that the lineator with a six pulse drive application ends up being lower losses, lower overall losses than you'd get with an active filter. So I think that's it for the questions today. Thank you, Tony, and thank you everyone for attending today's webinar, Treating Harmonics in Marine and Offshore Applications. If you have any other questions or have a specific application you would like to discuss, we'd love to hear from you. You can contact one of our sales team members at 1-888-866-4787 or by email at sales at mayorsinternational.com. We also have a chat and messaging system on our homepage at mayorsinternational.com. And on behalf of Mayors International and our presenters, thank you for joining us today and have a great day. Thank you all.